So in the last week, I found myself having um, two, two discussions with two separate colleagues. Um, one was regarding a colleague who had a patient uh, with perineal tendinopathy, and the other was a uh, discussion about uh, confirmed d degenerative change in the medial compartment of the knee. And both these colleagues uh, contacted me, and they were wanted to discuss potential sort of foot level intervention to help sort of complement the other um, arms of the rehabilitation strategy for these for these problems and what I found myself describing to both of them individually was what I would normally do um, with respect to introduce as a first line introducing some valgus wedging and normally just to the sock liner of the trainer and in podiatry we call these chair side modifications so something we can do right there and then in the clinic cheap nasty blue peter solutions but the patient can leave that day with something to, to trial and then feedback it's very very easy for them to remove if it gives them any problems as well um, now what we have with the two pathologies mentioned uh, perineal tendinopathy and medial knee compartment oa is two pathologies where the chair side modification i would use is is identical and we have a pretty solid uh, or pretty growing body of evidence that uh, valgus wedging at foot level will help uh, both of these issues now this video isn't really going to go into the 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 hardcore science or mechanics or the, the literature it's instead aimed to be much much more practical um, there isn't really anything you can buy um, quickly and, and simply off the shelf so if you do see either of these pathologies and want to try something there and then once you know what material you need and and what to do it's incredibly quick and simple to do so this, this video is basically showing you how I would do this now my way isn't necessarily the only way nor necessarily the best way but the way I've gravitated towards uh, over the years of sort of playing around with this sort of stuff a, uh, a couple of quick uh, excuses or disclaimers uh, I've been on paternity leave for the last three weeks so I've, I've been at home and um, so this video I did uh, on the island in my kitchen so apologies for that and also there's pretty low production value on it I completely forgot to rotate my uh, my phone which is which is what I videoed it on so it's a horrible uh, portrait video rather than landscape and the sound quality is was horrendous so that's why I felt the need to narrate over it um, all things that if it proves to be popular and, and I decide to do another one of these I'll probably look to um, improve upon for next time so when it comes to materials needed other than scissors and a pen and the actual sock liner of the uh, trainer uh, you're going to use uh, all you really need is a strip of wedging and this is the wedging that I prefer and the one that I'm using in the video I'm using the beige one which is five degrees and it's one with an adhesive backing and I get this from Algios um, at this point I should probably state I'm absolutely not affiliated with them nor am I being paid to to advertise them it's genuinely the one I use on a daily basis um, that said should mr. Sheridan uh, notice a massive spike in sales and wish to put me on commission I am completely cool with that but this is the only material that, that's needed to provide um, full-length valgus wedging uh, in the video uh, I will say that the strip I'm using will probably come at a cost of it will, it will work out significantly less than one pound so it really is a really cheap um, and quick way of getting something getting an intervention into one of your patient's shoes um, to you know to, to run that sort of temporary experiment so contact details will be at the end of the video if you want to get hold of me and you want to talk a bit more of the science or give me some feedback or maybe talk about things you want to uh, other modifications you'd like to see but other than that I um, We'll stop with withering on and we'll get on with it and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen and we're going to do some full length valgus wedging. Now the reason I go full length down the sock liner, this is apologies for the grottiness of this sock liner, it's a genuine sock liner. The reason we go full length is twofold. Firstly, over the years I've found that patients find it a lot more comfortable. And you can see this is the adhesive backing one that I'm using. It's a lot more comfortable going full length rather than just at the forefoot or the rear foot. And secondly, we have a much longer lever arm to the subtalar joint axis at the forefoot. 
um, what we're essentially trying to do here is shift the center of pressure laterally. Now, if you want a bit more of the science behind all of this, um, go to this blog that I wrote on Tom, uh, on Tom Goom's site, which will talk a bit more about it and give you a bit of a background. So, two important things, sticky side facing up towards the ceiling, and you put the insole on the top, the socket on the top, with the thick edge hugging the lateral border. And then you t simply take the pen and you draw all the way around it. When you take the inlay off the top, you can see that the pen mark that's left and you essentially just trim around the edges. Now it's gonna look a bit like the shape of an insole that's been cut away at the medial forefoot. And you'll see there's a reason for that shortly. So you literally just trim these edges as you can see. And once all of these have gone, you can then uh, put your sock liner back on top of it just to check that um, it sits on it okay. And you should see that gap underneath where the hallux and the first metatarsophalangeal joint sit. So adhesive backing comes off and then simply you stick it to the inlay again. Just make sure that the lateral edge, the thick edge of the wedge is hugging the lateral border of that uh, sock liner. Um, once it's stuck down, you're probably gonna need to make a few uh, adjustments, just a few trims around the edges. In clinic, what I'd normally do is grind it around its entire uh, edge, just to make it look a bit more uh, professional, only a tiny bit, mind you, but scissors is absolutely fine. Um, and there you have it, um, thick edge down the lateral border. Um, we want to completely make sure we're not interfering with first ray mechanics. You'll have the patient in front of you, so you can always trim this little bit back just to ensure that there's nothing under the, the hallux or the first MTPJ. Uh, but essentially, then what you have is, this is a right foot, um, I should have probably said at the start, a full length valgus wedge that's fairly comfortable, fairly well tolerated and should just slip straight back into the shoe ready for experiment. So I hope you found that useful. Like I say, cheap, quick, simple, and something I think anyone can do once they know um, what, what tools they need and how to do it. And um, you wanna to talk to me about it anymore, ask any more questions, um, this is how to get hold of me, e email, Twitter, Facebook. Um, and uh, depending on the feedback, maybe I'll do a few more of these because there are certainly um, three or four I can think off the top of my head that uh, we can make uh, chair side modifications for certain pathologies uh, or essentially use them as treatment direction tests to decide if we think orthoses are, are a sort of pathway we want to follow. So yep, look forward to some feedback and uh, hope you enjoyed it.